Chapter 7. M -m Millions, Josh said. Mademoiselle Musset nodded at him. Grandma Moses was becoming well-known before she died, she said. Now that she's been dead for years, she's very famous. How come she painted on wood instead of canvas, Dink asked. He pointed to the smoothly cut edges of the Grandma Moses painting. That is not wood, Mademoiselle Musset said. Grandma Moses lived in the country and could not buy artist canvases. But she had fiberboard in her barn, so she often used that. It is thin but very hard. How long does it take you to clean a painting, Josh asked. Perhaps two days for one this size, Mademoiselle Musset answered. Longer if I, if I have to make repairs. How do you do that, Dink asked. The canvas can become cracked or even ripped, Mademoiselle Musset explained. Or when it's on the fiberboard. The paint sometimes flakes off. I make the repairs and then I paint over the damaged places. Guys, we'd better get back to our cabins, Ruth Rose said. Thanks a lot, Mademoiselle Musset. It is nothing, the woman said. The kids hurried out of the lodge and ran toward the cabins. It's time for chores, Ruth Rose said. I'll see you guys. Oops. I'll see you later, okay? The guys nodded and walked to their own cabin. They found Buzzy taping a paper to the door next to the schedule. Hi, guys, he said. This is a chore list. All eight of you have to pitch in, but it shouldn't take more than 15 minutes. Dink and Josh read the list. Next to Josh's name, they read, Sweep Front Porch. Dink saw that his job was to straighten up the books and games shelf. Where are the brooms, Josh asked Buzzy. In the closet inside the wash house, Buzzy told him. Josh hiked over while Dink began organizing the games and books. The other six boys were sweeping, dusting, smoothing out sleeping bags, and straightening their cubbies. Ten minutes later, everyone was finished. Super job, you guys, Buzzy said. He looked at his watch. It's time to head back to the lodge for your clues to find the mystery map. They all ran to the picnic tables. When everyone was there, Angie stood on a bench and held up a paper bag. We've already hidden the 26 map pieces, she said. Now you can pick your clue cards. That will help you find them. She walked around and let each kid put a hand in the bag and pull out a card. Dink had a big, Dink's card had a big B written on the front. He turned the card over and found a feather taped there. What did you get, Dink asked Josh and Ruth Rose, showing them his card. I have a G, Ruth Rose said, with a flower petal on the back. Mine is M, Josh said. He flipped the card over and found some brownish hairs taped in place. Okay, everyone has a card now, Angie called out. The letter is one clue, and the item on the back is the second clue. Have fun! This is so cool, Ruth Rose said, but I think mine is too easy. G must stand for garden. Yeah, but which garden, Dink asked. There are flowers planted everywhere. Dink took another look at his card and the feather on the back. What do you guys think, he asked. Easy, Josh said. Bird bath. It could also be bird house or bird feeder, Ruth Rose said. Whose clue should we do first? Mine, Dink said. Why you, Josh asked. Because there are alphabet clues, and Dink comes before Josh and Ruth Rose in the alphabet, Dink announced. Okay, let's go see where the birds hang out, Ruth Rose said. The kids walked around the lodge. They waved to the other kids wandering around with white cards in their hands. They found a hummingbird feeder, but saw no ripped piece of map. They peeked inside a birdhouse, but only saw twigs and dead grass. Look, Josh said, he pointed to a few birds splashing in a bird bath. The, ru the kids rushed over, scaring the birds into a nearby tree house, into a nearby tree. The bird was, bird bath was made of a concrete bowl standing on a pedestal. I don't see a piece of map, Josh said. Dink tipped the water out and removed the bowl. Underneath, stuck there with masking tape, was a piece of paper. I found it, he cried. They all looked at the fragment of paper. Its edges were torn on all sides but one. That side had a dark blue line. Some pencil lines had been drawn on the paper, but they made no sense. One down, 25 to go, Dink said. Let's look for a garden, Ruth Rose said, glancing at her own card. Wait a sec, Josh said. He found a hose attached to the lodge and filled the bird bath with clean water. The kids roamed around the lodge, checking out flower beds. They saw plenty of flowers, but no map pieces. Ruth Rose studied the petal that was taped to the back of her card. She smelled it and rubbed her finger across its surface. This looks like some of my grandmother's roses, she said. Let's look for roses. On the south side of the lodge, in full sunlight now, stood three rose bushes. Each held several pink blossoms. Ruth Rose compared the living blossoms to the petal on her card. I can't tell if they're the same, she said. This petal is drying up. There was a ring of smooth rocks surrounding the small garden. Ruth Rose began looking under each rock. She found the map piece under the last one. 
The kid stared at the piece of paper in Ruth Rose's hand. It was the same kind of paper Dink had found under the bird bath. This piece had four letters written on it in block letters. E, T, and F, R, Josh said. They must be parts of words. I wonder if other kids are finding their pieces, Dink said, looking around. Kids were all over the camp, each one carrying a card. Let's look for yours now, Josh, Ruth Rose said. They studied the hairs that were taped on his card. M could stand for a lot of things, Josh said, like marshmallow. Marshmallows don't have hair, Ruth Rose re reminded him. Duh, Josh said. Do you think these are human hairs, Dink asked. Oh my gosh, they could be from Mario's mustache. Or Mademoiselle Mousset's hair, Ruth Rose said. No, Josh said. These hairs are light brown with little with a little white. She has black hair and Mario's mustache is very dark brown. They could be bristles from some kind of brush, Dink said. I saw a lot of paint cans in the barn, and there are a bunch of brushes hanging on the wall, Ruth Rose said. We could try there. But what about this M? Josh asked, tapping his card. Maybe the brushes have labels, Dink suggested. We might find an M on a label. It's worth a look, Josh said. The kids ran to the barn and peered in. A few of their kids were in there searching through stuff. Any luck? One of Ruth Rose's cabin mates asked. We found two, Ruth Rose said. Cool, the girl answered. Some of the boys in Bear Cabin have found four already. Josh stood on a box and examined the row of upside-down paintbrushes. Some of the brush handles had labels, but none of the brushes had an M, and the hairs on his car didn't match any of the brush bristles. What about some other kind of brush, Dink asked, studying Josh's clue card. My dad used to have a shaving brush made of badger hairs. I wonder if Mario uses one. The kids raced to the kitchen. They found Mario stirring a big pot. How is your treasure hunt going, he asked. We found two, but we're having a hard time with this one, Josh said. He showed Mario the M on the, his card and the hairs on the back. Um, do you have a shaving brush like this, Dink asked. Mario glanced at the card. Nope, I use an electric razor. Well, thanks anyways, Josh said. The kid sat on the steps and facing the barn. Guys, we're so stupid, Dink said all of a sudden. M is for moose. There's a moose head over the fireplace in the dining room. I'll bet these are the moose hairs. The kids raced through the kitchen and into the dining room. Mademoiselle Mousset was gone. The small painting she had shown them was on the table, partly cleaned. Now they could see a row of trees and some clouds. How do I get up there to Mr. Moose? Josh asked. I'll see if Mario has a stepladder, Ruth Rose said. She scampered back toward the kitchen. There were framed photographs, vases, and other small objects on the mantel below the moose head. Josh began looking under or inside each one. Dink peeked into the great room to see if Mademoiselle was there. She was not, but Dink noticed several framed paintings stacked on a sofa. He could only see the top, of the top one, a picture of some Native Americans walking along a path near a river. To Dink, the picture looked freshly cleaned. He assumed Mademoiselle Mousset had put these here to be rehung on the walls of the great room. Got one, Ruth Rose said, carrying a metal stepladder over to Josh. He climbed on it and held his card up to the hairs on the moose's face and beard. The colors look the color looks right, but the moose hairs are thicker than these, Josh said. He tugged a few hairs from the moose head. He came down off the ladder. See, he said, holding the moose hairs next to the card. Mine are thinner. How about artists' paintbrushes, Ruth Rose said. Some of my grandmother's brushes have hairs that look like the ones on Josh's card. Maybe, Josh said. And this M could stand for Mademoiselle Mousset. She has some brushes in her trunk. Yeah, but she wouldn't want us messing with them, Dink said. Josh walked over to Mademoiselle Mousset's trunk and Dink followed him. There were faded labels on the sides and top. One of the labels said, Property of Mern the Magician. Who's Mern? Josh asked. Mademoiselle Mousset got the trunk from a magician, Dink said. Dink said. He could have kept all his magic stuff inside like, he does, like she does with her cleaning things. The upright trunk was closed. On the left side, there were three latches that held the lid shut. Should we open it? Ruth Rose asked, standing next to Josh. We wouldn't touch anything. Just look for the map piece, right? I guess it wouldn't hurt anything to just take a quick peek, Dink said. There's no lock on it. Josh reached out and flipped the top latch. The lid stayed shut. He flipped the next latch down and the lid swung open sideways like a door. But instead of shelves holding jars and other supplies, the kids were looking at the Grandma Moses painting. There was a secret compartment inside the door of the trunk. 
What's this doing here? Dink asked. Why hasn't she hung it back on the wall? There are more paintings behind this one, Josh said. Dink counted five behind the Grandma Moses. Maybe she stores them in this hollow door until she's ready to frame them again, Ruth Rose suggested. Dink reached out a finger and touched the paint on the Grandma Moses painting. It was dry. He ran his thumb along the edges of the fiber board. They felt rough and bumpy. A thought was trying to force its way out of Dink's brain. He knew it was important by the way his arms erupted into goosebumps. But before he could pin the thought down, he heard footsteps on the stairs. Mademoiselle Mousset, Ruth Rose mouthed. Dink swung the trunk lid shut and flipped the latches back into place. Let's go before she sees us, he whispered to Josh and Ruth Rose. They slipped through the dining room door and headed for their cabins.